Hello everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Out to Your Studio. Today I'm sharing with you my full moon art and I'm doing it in conjunction with the Creative Arts Collaboration Arts Festival that's going on all weekend. There's a hashtag, hashtag love fall art. And if you put that hashtag in the search bar on YouTube, you will find all kinds of different autumn or fall themed art that you can watch. And of course, you guys who've been following along with me, if you're not new to my channel, you know that I've been making a full moon piece each month. And I have a Facebook group for that called, um, I think it's called Full Moon Art. I'll put a link below the video if you'd like to join the group. And each month, there is a named full moon. For the month of October, it is the hunter moon. Hunter moon is uh, when the Native Americans thought that the deer would be fat and it would be a good time to hunt the deer and then prepare the meat to last the winter. And so that, that is the time of year that, that they felt this is October. <clears throat> so when that full moon hit, that was the time to go and do those activities. Their life was you know, about preparation. So they picked the berries, they, you know, hunted the rabbits, they hunted the deer. Everything has a, a time and a season, and that's what this piece is about. Uh, last night I was out, and it's not the full moon anymore. Now it's about halfway, but it's still very large here in Arizona. It looks very large, and it's orangey, yellowy color. And another name for this moon sometimes is the blood moon. And I, I think that... You know, it's for the same reason as the hunter moon, but having that color in the, the autumn time of the moon where it's very orangey, reddy color rather than so bright and white and yellow um, seems to be about the changing of the light during this time of year. There's also, of course, a harvest moon, which is the moon that comes closest to the, uh, the, the equinox the autumn, autumnal equinox. And so that was actually last month's full moon. So I made a very large moon in the background of my piece. I wanted to, to think about that scale and how large it looked to me last night when I was out, even though it was, it was only a half because I just I haven't been out to see the moon this month. Um, I haven't been out much at all. <laughs> so... It just looked so large and I was I was looking at it and it was so large and orange and yellow. So for my piece, I made a large moon, a very large moon, larger than most of my other ones for the, the rest of the year. We've only got two more left and then this series will be over. And then I was thinking about the deer and I was thinking about, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to think about hunting. I don't want, <laughs> it's, the hunting has always bothered me. I, my family is very much into hunting and preserving meat um, that my family who lives in, up in the state of Idaho, all my uncles and my cousins, they all go out and they, they camp and they hang out and drink beer and they all try to get some sort of animal. And then they take the meat and preserve it and use it for their families all year. But <laughs> whenever I'm visiting, I'm like, no, I, you know, what meat is in that if they serve me something? Is it, is it deer meat or is it beef? You know, or is it, you know, I just, I don't know. I don't like to think about it. So, you know, coming up on this moon, I wanted to think more about how hunting is a beneficial thing rather than about, you know, killing the animals. I don't want to think about that. I don't like that. I don't want to think about it. But for people who need the food, it's it's very helpful. And also, if there are not hunters, sometimes the there gets to be an overpopulation of the animals. That's the reason that each state has an office that tracks how many animals there are and is there enough resources to feed all those animals or, you know, will they die of, of natural depletion of resources and then they issue tags for how many can be taken for food. So it is it is a regulated process. It's not like, 
you know, we're savages and they're all going out there just, Ur. but that's how they act. That's how my uncles and cousins act. They act like they're big, tough men who are going to go out there and get their deer, you know, and probably they're just sitting around drinking beer, I bet, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> I mean, let's be realistic. But as I was thinking about that and I was thinking about how the Native Americans who most of my full moon names are from, I'm, I'm getting them from the, the farmer's almanac who got them from Native Americans. And they all, they usually mention some, you know, European type names too that, that might be from some of the older people in whatever region. I mean, I'm sure that, that any, any natives that you might come across that were living from the land before this happened, <laughs> they probably have ways to track the season and the moon is a great way to track the seasons. So that would, that would be not surprising if maybe the Aboriginal people might have names for the moons. I don't know them. I'm getting the ones that I get from the farmer's almanac. And where was that, all that going? Oh, so, yeah, <laughs> so the names are coming from the Native Americans, and Native Americans that I've come in contact with, and I grew up near a reservation in Oregon, um, they're very, they, they honor the earth, they honor nature, they're very grateful for what Mother Earth gives them. Um, they have ceremonies and things that, that thank, thank the, the nature, and a lot of their spirit guides and things are animals. And so I wanted to create a type of full moon piece that would be more about love and honoring the animals, sort of. I mean, that's, that sounds so weird and sappy, but <laughs> I didn't want to make a big tough guy with a big bow and shooting the deer, you know, it just wasn't what I like about the idea of the hunter moon. And so instead I decided to make a female character and to me, feminine energy is softer and more loving, uh, some people are not going to agree with that. Let's not get into a discussion. I'm just, in my opinion, feminine energy is a little bit more loving and forgiving. So that's the reason that I made a female character. And uh, I thought it would be fun if she had some type of a headdress that was about deer. And so I gave her kind of an autumn leaf and antler headdress to wear. And I don't know why she's wearing it because she's she's holding a little baby fawn, which this isn't really the right season for fawns. They've already grown up, but I wanted it to be loving. I wanted it to be mothering. I wanted it to be that type of an image rather than a, a different idea. So she's got the baby. She's holding it. She's wearing the the antlers so maybe the baby deer thinks she's a deer I don't know but I also of course am doing this for the love fall art uh, arts festival going on so I wanted it to have very warm autumn colors which are already going on I mean we've got the big orangey yellowy moon I'm using a lot of quinacridone gold which is just a great color to blend with all these other colors and warm them up and these are acrylic paints that I'm using at this point. <clears throat> this is going to be a mixed media piece, but I started out with um, the acrylic. So these are the DecoArt fluid, media fluid paints. And they are kind of like golden fluid paints. They have a high pigment load and they're liquidy rather than, you know, like a heavy body thick gel type. So that's what I'm using for all of this first part is these media paints and adding in a lot of warm tones. I did use uh, Prussian blue for the background for the dark night sky. And then all the rest of the colors are warm tones. There's um, dialeride or however you say it, yellow. There's quinacridone gold. There's, uh, I did get out some 
transparent iron oxide, but I didn't use very much of that. There's uh, primary magenta. And then I think I ended up having to get out a, one of the, the traditions paints, which isn't one of the fluid paints. It's a different one, but it's both, it's from deco art as well to do the dark hair because I didn't have that particular kind of color in my fluid paints. I know it exists, but I didn't have it. So I'm just continuing to go along and paint and mix and blend colors um, and add them around. I've got some green gold, which is a warm tone green. And I've of course got titanium white, which I'm mixing. Uh, a lot of the colors that I'm using in these fluid paints are translucent. And so I like to mix them with a little bit of titanium white so that I get an opaque paint because I do have pencil marks on there and I wanna cover the pencil marks. Couldn't decide what color I wanted the antlers to be. At first I thought maybe they would be a bleach bone type color because you know they're not attached to the animal anymore so they wouldn't have the fuzz on them. But then that didn't look right so I ended up making it more of like a tan brown color like they would be if they had the fuzz on them still. And then of course the leaves are the fall leaf colors, the autumn colors that are coming out now. Um, my friend told me yesterday that where she lives, the, the leaves are all turning. So I'm sure a lot of people have that where they're living now. It's starting to have the golds and the yellows and the oranges and the reds and the trees, which is beautiful. Here in Tucson, Arizona, we don't have that. <laughs> so I'm not seeing that outside. So then I thought I would add a little bit of pattern um, tone on tone type monochromatic pattern to my uh, piece. And I'm using a stencil girl stencil called Wolf. And I will link it in the description box below so that you can find out which one it is. It has this triangular pattern on it, which reminds me of, if, if you're looking at the night sky, it seems like all the, the constellations that you can find, whether it's the Big Dipper, whether it's Orion, whatever, if you can identify a constellation, it's like you're going from star to star to star in a triangular pattern. So I, that's just, it just, triangles remind me of the stars in the sky. I don't know why. Maybe I, I did too many dot to dots when I was a child because you're always drawing a straight line between two points and that you end up with a lot of triangles. So I thought that would be interesting in the sky just to give it a little bit of pattern to get rid of any brush strokes. So I used a cosmetic sponge and sponged over the stencil. I did some darker over a medium and some lighter over a darker to just make a pattern. And then I used some of that titanium white paint and um, thinned it down with some water and splattered it to make these actual stars. I like to splatter when I make stars rather than doing them with dots because it gives a more random pattern. Can't control splatter. Splatter does what it wants. <laughs> so then I went and got my Neocolor 2 water soluble crayons or pastels. Um, I love these. They're so creamy. They're so full of pigment and opaque in most cases, except for the yellows because yellows are never really opaque. And I also have my Stabilo All Pencil, which is a black pencil that is extremely water reactive. And I'm doing kind of illustration lines. I like illustration lines. I prefer that over the painterly look of things. And so I'm taking that pencil at this point, it's just a little nub, <laughs> but I do have other ones that are full size. I just, I want to use this one up before I, I sharpen another one. And then I'm taking the crayon and I'm using it to kind of give me highlights and shadows over the acrylic. I love the way this looks. I think that it really gives me a nice effective blended look. So like in the case of her shoulder right there, I did some light yellow at the top and then kind of an orange yellow and then a terracotta color and then a mahogany color going down. And then I blended all those together and it gives me a real interesting blended look over the top of the acrylic. I could do that with acrylic paint, but it would just take me um, 
and it just doesn't give the same effect. I like the way the, the, the Neo Color Tube looks over the paint. I just enjoy it a lot. So I'm using a uh, water tank brush. This is a synthetic bristle brush that has water in the handle. And I'm going and blending around, blending the Stabello pencil, blending the, the Neo Color 2 crayon um, pigment. Of course, it's water soluble. So if I really want this to be, you know, a permanent painting, I need to, I need to seal it with, uh, I, I will use a spray sealer over the top, a matte finish spray sealer, and I'll put a couple coats over it and then it'll all be sealed in um, at some point. And I'm doing that with all the different areas. So like down there in, in her little top where it's kind of the green gold, I added a light lime green color for a highlight and then some olive underneath for a shadow. And I blended that. And then that just takes that kind of one color that I painted it with the acrylic and makes it into a more dimensional piece of color. So I'm doing that with the hair as well. I'm just going along adding some crayon, blending it, blending the pencil, and I do that through the whole piece. I did it with the face as well. And it brings out the details. Uh, it looks the way I like it. This is my type of style, I guess. I guess I have a style. <laughs> Somebody told me I did. <laughs> so this must be my style. I just, um, I like, I like it to have lines around it. So I hope you're enjoying this. Um, this piece took me two hours, 35 minutes to draw and paint, and this is sped up to um, eight times fast. So I know for some of you that's a little bit too fast, but I couldn't fit it into a 20 minute time slot unless I cut a lot of it out. And I thought it would be more interesting to see the whole process at a higher speed rather than to cut bunches of it out. So. After the, cam the camera turned off, I did add a little bit more stenciling um, using the another one of the patterns from that same stencil. I just used one stencil, but I used a few different parts of it. It has a lot of different interesting stuff on it. Hands are the bane of my existence. I don't like hands. I keep fussing with this hand. Um, someday I'm going to learn how to draw them better, but not today, apparently. It's okay, you can tell it's a hand, but it's not great. Um, I also decided to add, to use this little uh, plant sprig from the same stencil to add a little bit more of leafy sprigs of greenery coming out. And then I added a couple of them to the bottom to just kind of balance everything out as well. So then I had to go around those with the Stabilo All Pencil and blend that is in. And um, I think after I did that, that, that's when I turned the camera off. But then even after that, I stenciled with the Quinacridone Gold a few of the eye shapes up into the moon. So you'll see those in the pictures. And the pictures are almost ready to come up. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe and turn on your notification bells. You can pin this on Pinterest if you'd like to. And of course, go and check out the hashtag lovefallart. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.